two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God. These two verses are very interesting in the Bible. Mafungu haya mawili anasisimua bibiliani. And I want to say something about them. Na nataka niseme jambo kuyahusu. Uh, my title this evening Na mada yangu jioni hii is the old sparrow. Ni kwamba mbayuwayu asiye mshomoro asiye stahili. The old sparrow. Mbayuwayu msamani mshomoro asiye stahili. Let us pray. Tunaomba. We thank you Father. You've given us a new day in a new year. And you've given us the first Sabbath. We pray that you speak to our heart and you give us a message of hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we want to focus our minds to the old sparrow as described in the Bible. Tunataka kuangalia mashomoro haya jinsi alivyo tajwa kwenye Biblia. Let me begin by telling you what the sparrow is. Wacha nianze kwa kuelezeni kwamba shomoro ni nini? The sparrow is just an ordinary bird. Kwamba ni ndege tu wa kawaida. It is found almost everywhere in this planet Earth. Inapatikana mahala popote hapa ulimwenguni. It is one of the unimpressive birds up here in the sky. Ni mojawapo ya ndege ambayo haifurahishi hapa angani. It is not majestic like the eagle. Wamba, wala haina nguvu kama ile eh, kunguru. The sparrow is not beautiful like the ostrich. Wala haipendezi eh, kama ostrich. But it is just a nobody bird. Lakini ni ndege tu yuko hapo. They are found all over the world. Na yanapatikana sehemu zote ulimwenguni. And they are of different types. Na yako tofauti tofauti. They are united by the fact that they are tiny and almost ignored. Na, na jambo moja kwayo ni kwamba ni madogo na wakati mwingine upuziliwa. And in other countries they refer to the sparrow as the garbage bird. Na katika inchi zingine zinaitwa ndege wa taka taka. There is also something you should know. Na kuna jambo jingine la kufujua. No one has a sparrow as a pet bird. Hakuna mtu ambaye amewahi kufunga shomoro kama ndege wa kufugwa nyumbani. Like the Bible times Tofauti na nyakati za Biblia Our time has demoted the sparrows. Siku zetu zimeishusha ardhi shomoro. You know in the Bible times nyakati za Biblia because they were so ordinary kwa sababu ni ndege tu ya kawaida and they were literally worthless. Na ni kwamba hayakuwa na thamani. The Bible says that when, with one little coin you could buy two little sparrows. Na Biblia yasema kwamba kwa senti moja tu ungenunua mashomoro mawili. And during the Bible times na nyakati za Biblia if you could not offer animal of, animal offerings kama haungeweza kupata mnyama wa kutoa kafara you could use the sparrows. Ungeweza kutumia mashomoro. Brothers and sisters this evening Kaka na dada jioni hii I not only want to talk about the sparrow Wala sitaki tu kuzunguza kuhusu mashomoro but I want to talk about the ordinary of the old sparrow Nataka kuongea kuhusu hali ya kawaida ya sio ya tofauti wa huyu ndege mashomoro And I will try to explain the contradictions in the two verses we have just read Natajaribu kuelezea utofauti baina ya mafungu tuliyoyasoma In fact let me demonstrate this so that we we get the heart of the Wacha nipate kueleza kina gaubaga ili tupate kiini cha maubiri. May I find some sparrows here? May I find some sparrows? Ebu nipate mashomoro wengine hapa? Let me find some sparrows very fast, very fast. Ebu nipate mashomoro haraka? I need a total of seven sparrows. Ninataka mashomoro saba. because uh, it's unless we it is until we understand what i want to demonstrate here hadi tutakapoelewa yale najaribu kusema hapa we are going to understand this verse hatutaelewa fungu mafungu haya how many sparrows are these what did i say what is happening in this church mashomoro wengine wawili okay maybe others are are, are ostrich and 
Pengine wewe unachujichukua kwamba wewe ni Tausi. And the ego. Oh, I, I want two sparrows here. Ama wewe ni tai, nataka washomoro waje huku. And five sparrows the other side. Mashomoro wawili huku washomoro wa matano. The, you know, both Luke and Matthew Luka pamoja na Mathayo claim to report what Jesus said. Wanajaribu kuonyesha yale ambayo Yesu alisema. One person says, Mmoja anasema, five sparrows sold for two copper coins. Kwamba mashomoro watano wanauzwa kwa senti mbili. And he claims that that is exact thing Jesus said. Na anadai kwamba hiyo ndio Yesu alisema. Another person says, Na mwingine anasema, two sparrows sold for two for one copper coin. Kwamba mashomoro wawili wanauzwa kwa senti and moja. And he also wants us to understand that whatever he has recorded is the exact thing Jesus said. Na nataka tufahamu kwamba yale ambaye amesema ndio Yesu alitamka. Now the question is, Swali ni kuwa, who should we believe between Matthew and Luke? Tutamwamini nani kati ya Mathayo na Luka? Let me give you their background. Wacha nikwambie usuli wao. Matthew was a tax collector. Mathayo alikuwa mtosha ushuru. Perhaps we may believe him because he used to the life within the market. Pengine unaweza kukumwelewa maana alikuwa amezoea kutembea pale sokoni. Luke was a researcher. Na Luka alikuwa ni mchanganuzi. We may also believe him. Tunaweza kumwamini maybe he went and did a thorough research on the happenings in the market. Ama pengine alienda akachangua kuliko yaliyotendeka bibliani. That not with standing. Na si hayo tu, hiyo si hoja. Let me try to explain something. Wacha nijaribu kuelezea jambo. Those of us who have been to the market wale ambao wamewahi kuingia sokoni will agree with me that this that I say is the usual life in the market. Kwamba utakubaliana nami kwamba ndio hali pale sokoni. If you, if you go to the market you find one person selling sparrows. Ukienda sokoni upate mtu anauza mashomoro. You went to buy sparrows. Umeenda kununua mashomoro. You ask sir how much do you sell the sparrows? Kwamba utauliza je unauza ngapi? This seller will say I sell two at one copper coin. Na huyu atasema mimi ninauza mbili kwa senti moja. But as the routine is, jinsi ilivyo kawaida Always when we are in the market mtukiwa pale sokoni we say uh, yes i will buy but you will add me one more sema nitanunua lakini utaniongezea nyingine moja that one more ema jo lulu ngoni nyongesha na hiyo ndio wajaluo wanaita nyongesa now if you come to this seller ukiuja kwa huyu mzaji i want to buy i want to buy i have i have two shillings niko niko na senti mbili it is true you sell two at one shilling na ni kweli unauza mbili kwa senti moja but i want to buy for two shillings na ninataka kununua za senti mbili and if i buy for two shillings na nikinunua za senti mbili you will add me one extra utaniongezea nyingine moja and the seller says no atasema la hasha the market is bad kwamba soko ni mbaya I can't add you one more. Siwezi kuongeza nyingine. Then you move to the second bar seller. Unaenda kwa muuzaji wa pili. Then you 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 present to him your, your offer. Na unamwambia yale ulio nayo. So just how much do you sell your, your sparrows? Unauza pesa ngapi mashomoro? I sell my sparrows uh, uh, uh two sparrows at one copper coin. Kwamba mbili kwa senti moja. And I tell him I, I need to buy for two shillings. Na ninataka kununua ya senti mbili. And I will want you to give me one more. Na ninataka uniongeze moja. This is what happens in the market. Na hii ndio inatendeka sokoni. Gik minge sote chiro poknoke poknoke toko giniwe gigai guni akamoro. Kwamba zile za kuongezwa huwa zinaachwa kwenye guni aziwekwi nje. Are we together church? Je, tuko pamoja? Then then the, the, the seller accepts. Na yule muuzaji anakubali. Uh, yes, I will I will give you one extra. Nitakupa na nyingine ya pili. Then he goes back to the basket. Na anarudi pale kwenye kikapu. He goes back to the sack. Anarudi pale kwenye gunia. And he brings one confused sparrow. Na analeta ambayo wayu ambayo amechanganyikiwa. Bosa ngesi gimore chiro. Je, umewahi kuongezwa kitu sokoni? Wana penju juro. Wacha niwaulize wana migori. Mingeso kabe patigilera dear. Zile zinazoongezwa huwa zinakuwa safi kweli? 
Be uinja joka ma. Je, muna nisikiza. Ku uinja tingwa nilu wetu malu. Kama muna nisikiza mpate kunyanyua okay. mikono. It's like you are following the class. Inonekana no. muna, muna tunailewa. Those extra things being added in the market. Zile vitu vya kuongezo pale sokoni. Their characteristic number one, they are confused. Tabia yao ya kwanza ni kwamba vimechanganyikiwa. They are never grouped with the ones with value. Kwamba haziwekwi pamoja na zile zenye thamani. Now I want you to notice what what Jesus talked about. Nataka ufuate ni nini Yesu alizungumzia? Jesus did not talk about these two that their values are known. Yesu hakuzungumza kuhusu hii hawa ambayo thamani yao yajulikana. Wala hakuongea kuhusu wale wanne ambayo thamani yao inajulikana. He talked about this confused spark. Aliongea kuhusu huyu ambaye amechanganyikiwa. Our focus this evening kwa hivyo mada yetu jioni hii is not on the two. Si kwa wale wawili. Is not on the four. Si kwa wale wanne. We want to focus on this ordinary odd sparrow. Ni ni kwa yule mbaiwai wa kawaida. Mapacho yolalde. Ambaye amechanganyikiwa. This that which we want to focus on. Na hiyo ndio tunataka kuangazia. I hope now now we are together. Na tutarajia kwamba sasa tuko pamoja. Before they go. Kabla waende. You know if the seller refuses to add me this one confused sparrow. Ikiwa muuzaji atakataa kuniongeza huyu aliyechanganyikiwa. Then it means even these ones who are valued, nilimaanisha kwamba hata hawa walio wenye thamani will remain without being sold. Watabaki bila kuuzwa. The summary of the sermon of the sermon at this evening is this. Na kwa hivyo kwa ufupi mahubiri ni kwamba wengine jin summary usitazame watu kwa hitimisho tajo mokonge kama wengine hawako ibe nengo ni odok penye hata wewe thamani yako imeshuka na maria kuwi watch na ero aliye mwenye akili na apate maneno hayo katika roho now back to the text very fast because we don't have time Tunarudi kwa fungu kwa maana muda umeyoyoma. In Bible times because they were ordinary and literally worthless. Kwa sababu zilikuwa za kawaida na wala havikuwa venye thamani. They could be bought as I have just explained. Zilikuwa vinaweza tu kununuliwa jinsi nilivyoeleza. Now. Jesus has a message for all the sparrows. Yesu ana ujumbe kwa mashomoro wote. That extra sparrow is considered worthless. Huyu mshomoro mwingine anaonekana hayana thamani. That the seller would just add it as if it's just a useless thing. Na yule muuzaji angeongeza tu kana kwamba haina thamana. And the sparrow family is always a lower bird. Na pia familia ya mashomoro huwa zinakuwa na ndege hazina maana. That extra sparrow becomes the lowest of the low. Na hivyo basi huyo wa kuongezewa ndiye anakuwa wa thamana ya chini kabisa. It becomes the ordinary of the odd. Inakuja inakuwa wa kawaida miongoni mwa zile za kawaida. And that extra sparrow that Jesus talked about. Na huyu ambaye ni wa kuongezewa ndiye Yesu alizungumzia. That one useless sparrow. Huyu ambaye hana thamana. The Bible says God cares even for that useless con Biblia yasema kwamba Mungu anajali hata huyo shomoro ambaye amechanganyikiwa. Now in the context of our days, kulingana na wanyakati zetu, you know today if you are uneducated, leo hii ikiwa hauna usomi, if you are single, wewe unaishi upweke, if you are poor, wewe umaskini, if you are thin, wewe umekonda if you can't sing so nice kama huwezi kuimba vyema if you can't speak fluent english or kiswahili kama huwezi kuongea kiingereza if you don't own a flashy car or hairstyle kama hauna gari ya, ya, ya fahari ama nywele iliyo chanwa vizuri for the choirs who are here kwa waimbaji walio hapa if you sing people's compositions ikiwa utaimba nyimbo za wengine we treat you as an odd sparrow tunakuona kama shomoro wa kawaida but thank god it is until the extra useless sparrow is added to the valued na itakuwa hivyo hadi yule shomoro asiyekuwa na thamana ataongezwa kwenye aliyo na thamana until that confused sparrow is added to the value hadi huyo shomoro ambaye amechanganyikiwa ataongezwa kwenye aliyo na thamana even the 
one would want to be accepted by the buyer. Hata hiyo yaliyo na maana hayataongezwa hayatanunuliwa. So Jesus has four things to the old sparrow. Kwa ma, kwa hivyo Yesu ana mambo manne kwa yule shomoro wa kawaida. And these four things are what I want to talk about. Talk na, about. Na hii mambo haya manne ndio nataka kuzungumzia. Jesus says in Luke 12 verse 6. Katika Luka 12:6 Yesu anasema That old sparrow listen to me. Kwamba wewe mbayu wayu ambaye si wa kawaida nisikilize. Number one, you are not forgotten by God. Jambo la kwanza haujasaulikwa na Mungu. Can I hear somebody say amen there? You know I don't know I, maybe I don't know how I can explain this old sparrow thing. Pengine sijui namna kuelezea kuhusu mbai wai shomoro huyu wa kawaida. Have you lived in an estate? Je, umewahi kuishi kwenye mtaa? Where everybody locks her door or is door in the morning? Ambapo kila mtu anafunga mlango wake asubuhi. They go to their work places. Wanaenda katika sehemu zao za kazi. And you remain in the estate alone. Na unabaki pale mtaani peke yako. At that state you become Odd. Na wakati huo umebaki upweke. So odd that when they come back from their workplaces. Wewe ni mtu wa kawaida hata wakitoka kwenye kazi the zao. The only question they can ask you. Swali ambalo wangeweza kukuuliza. Benga tomanyaka. Neno ngatomanya. Je, umeona mtu amenitafuta? Have you become so old? Je, umekuwa mtu wa kawaida? Until you find your all your friends have bought new year dress. Uambie hadi ukapata marafiki wote wamevaa mavazi mapya ya mwaka mpya? Have you found yourself so odd? Be umewahi kujipata. Until today people are uh, are preparing chapatis. Hadi leo hii watu wanaandaa chapati. In for the continue galot ni ma 2020. Wewe bado unaendelea tu na mboga yako ya mwaka 2020. And I've realized. Na nimegundua nothing nothing. Hakuna chochote hearts like soya mauo kwa jirani uh, inaumiza kama harufu ya kutoka kwa jirani kato kidwa winjo soya no kama hutaki kusikia harufu hiyo kati the pond mi umri gongeet hata ujifiche ndani ya blangeti jirani chelo cha pato utasikia jirani akikaanga chapati harufu itakufikia kama una pesa mtoto wako ndiye atakuambia mama leo wanapika chapati alafu utamwambia itaisha jinoroma I don't know whether somebody has become so odd to that extent. Sijui kama kuna mtu ambaye amekuwa pweke kwa hali hiyo. Have you been so odd in your estate? Je, umekuwa tu peke yako pale mtaani? Until, until the estate leader goes around collecting contributions. Hadi yule kiongozi wa mtaa anaenda akikusanya hela kwa watu. And then he fails to come to your house. Na kwa nyumba yako waji. Because he knows. Kwa sababu anajua you have nothing. Hawauna chochote. God says you are not forgotten by God. Mungu anasema haujasaulika. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Now now all the sparrows take that with you. Now the Bible says Biblia yasema all the sparrows are people who are despised. Ni kwamba mashomoro wa kawaida ni wale ambao wanadhiakiwa. They are considered as nobodies. Wanaonekana kwamba hawana thamani. If you are skinny today kama wewe umekondeana leo If you are fat today pengine umenenepa If you are old today ama pengine hujazogewa If you are divorced today wa ume, ume If you are poor today wewe uh, the world umaskini, will treat you as old Ulimwengu utakuona kama mtu wa kando You know in your life sometimes you begin to think nobody cares for you Katika maisha yako wakati mwingine unawazia hakuna mtu anayekujali Sometimes you begin to think nobody thinks about you Ama unaweza kuwazia hakuna mtu anayekufikiria People say there is nothing good that can come from you Mtu anasema hakuna chema kinachoweza kutoka kwako You are kwa classified kwa. as stupid Wewe unaonekana ni mpumbavu They never consult you because to them you have absolutely Wala no good kulizi, maana hauna chochote cha thamani cha kuambia Good news this evening Habari njema jioni hii Jesus says Yesu anasema You are not forgotten by God Haja Mungu hajakusahau no, no matter how this world treats you 
haijalishi ulimwengu linakutenda kwa namna gani the church inside here treats you haijalishi kanisa linakutenda namna gani you are not forgotten by god mungu wala haja kusahau you are engraved in the palm of his hands wewe umeandikwa katika mganja la mkono wake we may treat you as stupid tunaweza kukuona wewe ni mjinga we may treat you as reckless tunaweza kukuona hauna maana we may treat you as worthless tunaweza kuona thamani yako hakuna but god in heaven lakini mungu mbinguni remembers you anakukumbuka Praise the living God. Amen. He remembers us. Anatukumbuka. Come on, I want to talk to the heart of somebody. Nataka kuongea na moyo wa mtu. Maybe today people got opportunity to walk 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 go out. Pengine leo watu walipata nafasi ya kwenda na kuzuru. Go and enjoy the dawn of a new year. Walienda kula nje wakifurahia. And as you to this message today got you at a state where you could manage nothing. Na leo imekupata katika hali ambapo hauna chochote. Maybe nobody remembered to to send you a happy a happy year. Hata pengine mtu atakutumia salamu za heri ya mwaka mpya. God has not forgotten about you. Mungu wala haja kusahau. The second thing that God tells to the old sparrow. Jambo lingine ambayo Mungu anasema kwa huyu mshomoro ambaye ni wakando Matthew chapter 10 verse 31 katika kitabu cha Mathayo 10:31 Sparrow you are of much value kwamba wewe mba you are mshomoro uko na thamani you know people would treat you as that watu watakuona kwamba wewe ni takataka but you are of value lakini una thamana let me ask you something wacha nikulize swali How would you feel when you wake up and find yourself alone in your village? Utajihisije ikiwa umeamka asubuhi ukajipata huko wake up and you find yourself kitijini. alone in your estate. Umeamka ukajipata huko peke yako pale ndani. You are just there alone with your car. Wewe huko hapo peke yako na gari lako. Alone with your papers. Na pamoja na karatasi zako. Alone with your big flat screen TV. Na hata na hiyo runinga yako kubwa. You are just alone there is nobody you are alone in your good house. Kwamba huko peke yako na katika hiyo nyumba yako nzuri. And you are only surrounded with trees. Na wewe umezungirwa tu na miti. And no human being. Na hakuna mtu yeyote. How would you feel Mut- if, if if the phd's and the doctorates came to preach in the church and they found nobody but the pews utaisije wakati ambapo waliohitimu mashahada wamekuja kuhubiri na wamepata viti peke yake how would it feel if you are the chairperson utaisije kama wewe ndio mwenyekiti how would it feel if you are the elder utaisije kama wewe ndio mzee kanisani if you are the director but you have nobody to lead kama wewe ndio mkurugenzi na huna mtu wa kuongoza how would it feel if you are the choir trainer but nobody Ute, to train utaisije kwamba wewe ni mwimbishaji na huna watu wa how would it feel if you are the lead soprano but nobody to lead utahusabu isije wakati ambapo unazunguza na hakuna naye kuamini how would it feel if you are the best choir but nobody to sing to na utaisije kwamba wewe ni waimbaji mashuhuri na hakuna mtu wa kuimba. Feel if you are the best preacher and nobody to preach to. Utaisije wewe ni muhubiri na hakuna mtu wa kuhubiria? Listen to this. Sikiliza haya. Your value does not change because of the external situation. Thamani yako haishuki kwa sababu ya mambo ya nje. No, the um, our value does not change because of what is happening outside kwamba thamani yetu haishuki kwa sababu ya yanayotendeka kule nje i carry in my hands here 100 shillings note niko na hela hapa ya shilingi 100 ikiwa nimeifunga hivyo nimeikuja hivyo kisha nikairusha chini then somebody comes na mtu anakuja he picks it anaiokota as folded as it is jinsi ambavyo imekunjwa What is the value of the money he has picked? Nini thamani ya pesa ambaye ameokota? Judge, how much is this? Even at this state it's still 100. Hata jinsi ambavyo imekujwa bado ni 100 tu. Suppose I spit on it. Ama pengine nimetemea mate. Then I drop it down in on mud. Na kisha nirushe kwenye matope. Somebody comes and picks it. Mtu anakuja na yokota. With all the saliva on it. Na tayari iko na mate. And the mud on it. Na iko na matope. How much is it? Ni pesa ngapi? Na towe buoge. Mtu asikukutushe. Na towe kai matini mare cha malot. Mtu asikushushe thamani kwamba wewe unakula mboga. A lot ke chapati rome chobe pokne gidao. Koso? Mboga na chapati zinakuchana chooni na wala hazijawahi kukombana. Yesu Kristo asifiwe. <laughs> All 
Or to sparrow your value. Your value. Walk down here as someone who understands his value. And, and before I move to the second thing that Jesus says to the sparrow, let me, let me remind ourselves that sometimes we, we lower our value for nothing. You know, don't, don't be always available. You lower your value. Don't be available. Where members who are here don't just be available. Just call people. No, we don't want to be alone. Once had a church elder. Wherever he went, he asked the people, "May I preach to you?" You decrease your value. Ukiwa wewe ni mzee wa kanisa mali popote umeenda ati ni waubiri e una sushi tamani yako. Don't be so talkative until you want to raise pawns in every meeting. You, you decrease your value. Kwamba usiwe mtu wa kuongea katika kila mkutano unataka upate kusikilizwa utashusha thamani yako. This was not a sermon. Let us move to the third one. Hebu tuende kwa ya tatu. Jesus talks to the heart of the old sparrow. Mungu Yesu alizungumza kwa roho ya yule. And he says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 29. Katika Mathayo 10:29. Old sparrow you are false and your circumstances are permitted by God. Kwamba hali yako kama mshomoro imeruhusiwa na Mungu. In other words whatever you go through. Katika maisha yoyote unayopitia. Be it good or bad. Japo ni nzuri au mbaya. Permitted by God himself. Ni Mungu ndiye ameruhusu. Sicknesses Divorce, separation, widowhood, hard times, persecutions, all the you go through is permitted by God. You know, the Bible doesn't only say that when a sparrow falls, God sees them. The Bible says more. The Bible says more. The Bible says when they fall. Meaning even those confused sparrows do fall. But, but, but when they fall. God permitted it. And they won't fall without God's permission. So God allows them to fall. For his glory. And for the glory of God's church. And the Bible says the sparrow will not fall without God noticing. The Bible says he sees it. He allows it for his glory. And for their correction. You know, I can illustrate to you the giants who fell. I can also bring before you weak and not so famous people who also fell. The last thing that Jesus says to the sparrow, Jesus says, old sparrow, you don't need to fear. No, if you read the King James Version of the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. This word fear not. Appears in the King James Version of the Bible 365 times. It comes to my mind. That a year has passed. 365 days. It's like God knew that each and every day will, will come with its own fears. So God gave us a fear not for each and every day throughout the year. So there is a fear not for today. Take it. 
There is a fear not for tomorrow. Many of us are afraid of tomorrow. We are afraid of death. We are afraid of hard times. We are afraid of betrayals. You know, we are also afraid of how people are viewing us. We are afraid of rejection. We are afraid of embarrassment. Afraid of defamation. But when God says, fear not, somebody told me that when God says, fear not, that is the best time to begin wondering. Because he is about to tell you to do what he knows is impossible to be done. The good news is don't fear because God is greater than anything anyone can do. You know, this was just a summonette. Let me summarize by saying as follows. Friends, if it is true that you are not forgotten by God, if it's true that you are of much value, if it is true that your faults and circumstances are permitted by him, if it is true that you don't have to fear, then begin this year with a lot of courage because we were all created in the image of God. Christ died for us and his, and his death on the cross gives me value and promise for the future. Now, what are my parting shots as I usher you into the Sabbath? Number one, God's sparrow should announce to the world that God can take seemingly ordinary people and make them extraordinary people. Oh, I wish I said that in a different church. God makes an ordinary person. He picks an ordinary thing. And he makes them all the extraordinary things. Uh, God is good. I know I can bring before you ordinary people who are accomplishing so much in their life. Not because of their might, because of God's doing. I can tell you ordinary churches who are doing extraordinary mission. I can also tell you extraordinary churches who are just doing ordinary Work. I can tell you today about ordinary preachers who God has used extraordinarily. I can also bring before you extraordinary preachers who have used God ordinarily. Listen to this. As we begin the year, as we usher in the first Sabbath, in this new year, in this new year, my message to everyone, watching from home, watching while driving, watching in the church, God is perfect in making ordinary be extraordinary. I pray for you as ordinary as you may appear. God would take you to his workshop. He, he works on you. And when he is done with you and he raises you to go out that people may see an extraordinary being. Happy Sabbath and may God bless you. Shall we rise up for a word of prayer? 
Oh, Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the new year, and we thank you for the first Sabbath in the new year. I pray for your people. As we begin this journey to the unknown, I pray, Father, that we may use us ex extraordinarily. You may remind us throughout this year that we don't need to fear. Remind us that we are of much value. Remind us, Father, that our circumstances are permitted by you. And remind us, Father, that our value will not change because of the external things around us. This evening, I want to pray that you may use this church extraordinarily. This evening, I want to pray that you may use us tomorrow extraordinarily. I want to pray, Father, that you may uplift your people in an extraordinary way. Because you are perfect at doing that. May you meet someone. Someone who is dejected and discouraged. Someone who has not enjoyed the beginning of this year. Someone who has finished the day and have just witnessed as people walk around and enjoy the rising of the sun. But because he could not manage, Lord, he has just observed the happenings. Remind such a person of the four things that you have said to the heart of the old sparrow. All of us here are odd in a way. In that way, I pray you use us. Your will be done and give us the blessings of the Sabbath. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.